While Lucifer is not the main character of has -Been Hotel, he is just as integral to the story, setting up the conflict not just as the king of all of hell, but as the father of our main character, Charlie Morningstar. Today, I want to talk about everything we know about Lucifer in the show, the history of the real-life mythological character of Lucifer, as well as whether or not he's the serpent from the Garden of Eden, something that seems to be implied in the show, but has a complicated story in real life. My name is Deep Cut, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it when I do more deep dive theories like this one, and let's jump into it. Lucifer is the king of all of Hell, making his wife Lilith the queen and his daughter Charlie the princess. Hell itself is divided into seven territories called rings that act as their own little nations, all stacked on top of each other. Each ring is named after one of the seven deadly sins and is ruled by a prince embodying that sin as their theme. Lucifer acts not just as the king of hell, but as the prince of the pride ring in particular as well, the highest ring of hell. Beneath Lucifer are six other princes who are mostly subservient to him, though still have some rights that Lucifer is not able to trample on, as proven by the prince of the greed ring Mammon being able to completely rip off Lucifer's theme park Lulu World, which Lucifer has nothing he can do about legally. Just below Lucifer on this hierarchy is Satan, ruling over the Wrath Ring, which is of course just one ring down from Pride. Lucifer in the show is a fallen angel. According to series creator Vivzy Pop and writer for both Hasman Hotel and Hell of a Boss Adam Nalen, being banished to hell from heaven is what gave Lucifer his more demonic appearance, despite being born an angel. His daughter Charlie ended up inheriting those demonic features, but if welcomed in heaven for permanent residence, both characters would take on an angelic form. As an angel, and a powerful one at that, Lucifer and Charlie cannot actually be killed by angelic weapons, and can only be smited by an angel who outranks them, though for whatever reason, these angels decided to let Lucifer have control of Hell instead of killing him. It is uncertain which, if any, of the other demon nobility are also fallen angels, but if any of the others are angels, they are definitely outranked by Lucifer in that hierarchy as well, and that gives him special rules that the others may not follow. Lucifer has a lot of symbolism surrounding him in the show, including the snake and apple, which most people understand to be references to the Garden of Eden. Lucifer himself was not in the biblical story of the Garden of Eden, nor were there likely any apples, though over time he became associated with the serpent for various reasons. Today, we will be discussing the origins of Lucifer, but keep in mind that we are only zigzagging through several of the ways that Lucifer, as a mythological character, has changed over time. There is always much more to his story and other roots to his overall character that he descended from elsewhere that eventually got mixed into what we know today, but won't necessarily be mentioned here, as we will be focusing on what is most relevant to the shows. Lucifer has his earliest roots, like most mythologies do, in astronomy. Back when story was only told with spoken word, the stars became a beautiful stage to point up to at night when telling stories to your children, and over time, the stories for each star would start to resemble the way they interacted with all the other lights in the sky. Lucifer's origin actually came from the story of the planet Venus. While most people know Venus mythologically to be a Roman goddess of love, this was just one of many interpretations of Venus. Venus was known by many cultures as the Morning Star, as it was the last star you would see as the sun began to rise, shining more brightly at that moment than in the darker time of night. Venus shining like this signaled that the sun was just about to rise over the horizon, turning the sky blue, and finally covering Venus entirely. This title of being the Morning Star is the inspiration for Charlie and Lucifer's family name in the show. While in the pilot they are known as Lucifer and Charlie Maine, Maine meaning the Great, they were rebranded after the pilot as Charlie and Lucifer Morningstar for the main series. The sun was generally revered as being the most important light in the sky, the one that provided all of the things necessary for life on Earth. In many cases, the sun was revered as the god above all others, so to some cultures, Venus signaling the return of the sun meant that Venus was a favorite star of the suns, a beautiful light that the sun used to signal his return. In others, it was the reverse, a star that, while beautiful, was trying to outshine the sun, priding himself above God only to fall from God's favor. To some cultures, the sun represented knowledge, both practical and philosophical, such as the creation of fire itself as tools for humans, or how to connect with God in divine ways. 
As such, Venus is seen as being a light bringer, bringing the sun's light and its wisdom to humanity before the sun rises. In other cultures, this had a more negative connotation, such as this light bringer, this Lucifer, using his great shine to bring us godly knowledge that we are not ready for, or that the gods did not want us to have. Thus, he was seen as a villain that had to be punished, and that humans had to be punished alongside. The word Lucifer only appears once in the Bible, and itself is a translation from the Hebrew word Hallel, which was the Hebrew word for the morning star, Venus. In this passage, Isaiah 14, a corrupt Babylonian king is being described, and the title of Venus is used as a metaphor for the obnoxious levels of pride the king had that made him fall from any real sense of authority that he had inherited. To put it simply, the title of Lucifer here was being used to describe the king with the planet Venus and the many mythological stories behind it as a metaphor, but not actually describing a devil-like figure within Hebrew mythology. Now, the portrayal of the devil as we know him today largely comes from the New Testament, where Satan is depicted as a figure who rebels against God in the book of Revelations, taking one-third of the angels with him before being cast into a fiery pit, which became the inspiration for hell. He is also the figure who tries to tempt Jesus Christ into worshipping him by offering him the world. This Satan was inspired by other mythological figures of the time, including the Ha Satan figure from the Old Testament talked about in my previous video. Now, what is really interesting about Satan's betrayal in the Book of Revelations is that his battle in heaven is described as being a battle between the stars, a common theme in mythology as discussed already, and one that sounds very similar to that of Lucifer's story. Because of this, Satan and Lucifer would spend the next several thousand years having their names becoming synonymous and then again distinguished from each other through various pockets of Christian culture leading into today. Texts like the Peter Binsfield classification of demons from the 1500s, which attempted to create a supposed real-life guide to demonology, distinguished between Lucifer and Satan as different princes in hell, embodying the sins of pride and wrath respectively, inspiring the system we have in the show with the seven princes of hell. In more purposely fictional writings in the centuries before and after, however, Satan and Lucifer would be used as different names for the same character in such classic works as John Milton's Paradise Lost or Dante's Divine Comedy, which seem to have some influence in Lucifer's character in the show, and really the show as a whole. The decision to combine these two characters' names in these classic works seems inspired by the misreadings of Isaiah 14 as the origin story for Satan due to the similarities of their texts of stars falling from the sky, but as we discussed, this was actually just the description of a Babylonian king and not a prequel to the story revealed in Revelations. Now, The Serpent from the Garden of Eden was not written with either Satan or Lucifer in mind in the book of Genesis, but the book of Revelations describes Satan as the serpent that deceiveth the world retroactively making him the serpent from the Garden of Eden in Christian mythology. Lucifer, as we just explored, has a lot of overlap with Satan as the Christian devil, but it actually does make more sense for Lucifer to be associated with the serpent than Satan based on their mythological roots, as well as for Lucifer to be the king of hell outranking Satan and the true devil. The story of the Garden of Eden is that of God creating the first man and woman to tend to the garden, and in return, they may eat from any of the great fruits they grow. The only exception is a tree that grew the fruit of knowledge of good and bad. The serpent is introduced as being more crafty than the other animals, but not having any special significance beyond that. He misleads Adam and Eve into eating the forbidden fruit, for which they are punished, and the serpent is punished as well. The serpent's role in the story is very similar to other mythological figures, such as Prometheus and, of course, variations of the Venus or Lucifer mythology. It is about a figure priding themselves as being above God and choosing to ruin God's creation. Stories like these are why pride became regarded as the most deadly sin, because in relation to an all-powerful being, the only thing that you can do to truly offend him is to just outright believe that you know better. Wrath is a great reason for other angels to rebel as well, but without pride, without someone like Lucifer believing themselves to be above God himself, the other sins don't have any reason to believe that their sin should mean more to them than God. It is pride that allows all the other sins to happen. So it makes sense why, 
throughout history, Lucifer and Satan were often going from being the same characters to separate entities in different cultures. But why it makes sense for them not just to be separate characters in Hasbin Hotel and Hell of a Boss, but for Lucifer to be the true devil figure, and the one behind the serpent in the Garden of Eden, the one trying to ruin God's creation. But if Lucifer is just the entity behind the serpent, who is the serpent himself? Join me in part 3 of this 4-part series when I discuss in our next video, Is Alistair Working for Lucifer?